Today I've got a nice integral for you, and this one was suggested by a viewer. So I welcome you guys' suggestions. Sometimes I don't always see them, but I'm happy to get them when I do. So we wanna look at the integral from zero to infinity of x over e to the x plus one. And looking at the integrand, we see that it's a polynomial times a more complicated function. So generally, when you have something like that, you should be thinking about maybe using integration by parts, and that's because taking the derivative of the polynomial makes it simpler, so perhaps you could transform this into an integral that's easier to calculate, and that's exactly what we'll do. And that brings us to the first tool that we will use in this evaluation, and that's the integral of one over e to the x plus one. So let's maybe go ahead and derive this identity. So like I said, we've got the integral of one over e to the x plus one dx. Now we'll use like one of the mathematician's favorite tricks, which is adding zero to the numerator. We'll just add zero in a careful way. I'm gonna add it as plus e to the x minus e to the x. So we'll have one plus e to the x minus e to the x over one plus e to the x dx, like that. Now next, I'll split this into two integrals. So I've got one plus e to the x over one plus e to the x, but that's just the integral of dx. And then this will be minus the integral of e to the x over one plus e to the x dx. Now looking at the second integral, we see that the derivative of the denominator is exactly the numerator. So that gives us a hint that we could use some sort of substitution. So I'll use t as my substituting variable. So let's let t equal e to the x plus one. That makes dt equal to e to the x dx. Okay, so let's notice that this e to the x dx is my dt term, and then that denominator has been completely gobbled up by my substitution. So now integrating out this dx will give us x, and then we have minus the integral dt over t. And I'll suppress my constant of integration because our final goal is a definite integral. So now doing the antiderivative of this second term will give us x minus the natural log of t, but recall that t is e to the x plus one, so we can write that as e to the x plus one. Then finally, we can take this x and we can rewrite it as the natural log of e to the x using the inverse relationship of the exponential function and the logarithmic function. But now using log rules, we can put these two ln's together, giving us ln of e to the x over e to the x plus one, which is exactly what we wanted for this first tool. Now we're going to look at our second tool, which is a series expansion of the function natural log of 1 plus u. So it expands as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 u to the n over n. And there are certain values of u that satisfy this. The absolute value of u has to be less than 1. But as you'll see, when we make our substitution in our final solution, that will be satisfied. So we're gonna use as our starting point the standard formula for a geometric series, which is one over one minus t equals the sum as n goes from one to infinity of t to the n. And that holds when the absolute value of t is less than one. Which again, like I said, in the end, our substitution will obey that rule. Okay, so now let's maybe make a substitution into this starting point. We'll set t equal to minus u, and that'll give us the formula one over one plus u equals our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n, u to the n, like that. Okay, nice. Now next what we can do is take the antiderivative of both sides and we'll do that with respect to u. So maybe I'll write it like this. We're taking the antiderivative of both sides of this. On the left-hand side, that'll give us the natural log of one plus u. And then on the right-hand side, that'll give us this sum as n goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n, u to the n plus one, all over n plus one. Now we can make a re-indexing of the sum. So here we'll replace n with n minus one. So that means this exponent right here will change from n plus one to n. This denominator will change to n. 
this guy changes to n minus one, but notice n minus one and n plus one have the same parity, so we might as well write that as n plus one, which I think is more standard. And then when n minus one equals zero, n equals one, so that changes our starting point. So after this re-indexing of our sum, we end with the identity which we were going for. And now we're ready to move on to our main goal, which is this integral from zero to infinity of x over e to, e to the x plus one. So like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use an integration by parts here. So we'll let u equal x, that will make dv equal dx over e to the x plus one. And that's motivated by two things. Maybe the most important is that when we take the derivative of x, it gets simpler. Whereas if we were to take the derivative of this, it would get less simple or more complicated. So hopefully this will have an overall simplifying effect on our integral. So notice calculating du here will just give us dx and calculating v here. Well, that antiderivative is tricky, but we worked it out as our tool. So this is gonna be the natural log of e to the x over e to the x plus one. Okay, so these are all of the parts we need for our integration by parts setup. So let's just really quick recall the standard integration by parts formula to get us going. So we have the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du where we've done the appropriate um, substitution of endpoints in as needed. Okay, so let's see what we get. We'll have u times v, that's going to be x times the natural log of e to the x over e to the x plus one. We need to evaluate that from x equals zero to x equals infinity, but I'll write that as x approaches infinity because really we need to do a limit there because it's an infinite bound of integration. Next, we'll need minus the integral of v du. So let's see what we get for that. So that's gonna be minus the natural log of e to the x over e to the x plus one dx. Now we've got this object right here. If we plug in zero, we're gonna get zero times the natural log of a half, but that just gives us zero. If we plug in infinity or let x approach infinity, we have an indeterminate form. But it's pretty easy to check with L'Hopital's rule that that also goes to zero. So I'll just cancel all of this out to zero and let you guys check both of those endpoints carefully. Okay, next what we wanna do is take this minus sign and bring it inside of the natural log to take the reciprocal of the argument. So that's gonna give us the, anti or the integral from zero to infinity, so I left off those bounds, of the natural log of e to the x plus one over e to the x dx. But that's a little bit easier to work with because we can make some sort of simplification of the inside of that natural log by canceling out parts of the numerator with the denominator, leaving us with one plus e to the minus x. Okay, great. But now notice that that integrand is exactly equal to the natural log of one plus u, where we've evaluated u at e to the minus x. So we can apply our second tool to that to change it into a series. So here we have the integral from zero to infinity, and now this sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one. Now we have u to the n, but u is equal to e to the minus x. So that's gonna be e to the minus nx over n, and then we have dx. And I wanna point out that this series is okay. In other words, it converges for all necessary values of u because as x goes from zero to infinity, e to the x is always less than one, except at that endpoint, but that's like a set of measure zero, so it doesn't matter so much. Okay, great. So next what we can do is exchange the order of summation and integration. So you can do that by the dominated convergence theorem, although we will not prove that. So that's gonna give us this sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one, one over n, and then the 
integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus nx dx. So let's maybe bring that up to the top and we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we worked our goal integral down to the following form. Now we're gonna take this inside integral and start evaluating. So I'm gonna leave the sum out front. So we've got the sum as n goes from one to infinity. We have our alternating harmonic part. So that's minus one to the n plus one times n. And now we've got to take the antiderivative here, but that's like standard because we have an exponential. And so using the chain rule, we can see that that's gonna be minus one over n e to the minus nx, and then we need to evaluate that from x equals zero to x approaching infinity. Now next, as x approaches infinity, e to the minus nx will approach zero. So that's gonna cancel out. And then if x is equal to zero, e to the minus nx is equal to one, but that's in the lower bound, which means it has a minus sign attached to it, which will cancel out with this minus sign. So all in all, we'll be left with the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n squared. So again, plugging in infinity will give us zero, plugging in zero will give us one, but it's in the lower bound, so it cancels out with that minus sign there, and we're left with that object right there. Okay, great. Now there's a bunch of ways to calculate this, but we're gonna do it by writing it in terms of the famous Basel problem. So I wanna break this into the even and the odd parts, and that's because it's alternating. So for all of the even numbers, n plus one is odd, so we get a minus sign. And for all of the odd numbers, n plus one is even, so we get a plus sign. So that means we can rewrite this as the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over two n plus one squared. So those are all of the odd terms. And then minus this sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n squared. So those are all of the even terms. So I just split this into odd parts and even parts. Okay, now next what I wanna do is rewrite this set first term, which is the sum of the reciprocal of the odd numbers, as the sum of the reciprocal of all of the numbers minus the sum of the reciprocal of the even numbers. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So let's telegraph that by saying we've got those braces that's breaking this apart into the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. So that's the sum of all of the reciprocal of the squares minus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n squared. So that's the even terms. And then we have minus another one of those right here. So that's gonna be the sum n goes from one to infinity of one over two n squared as well. So next what we wanna notice is that each of these can be rewritten by taking a two squared out of the denominator, giving us minus one quarter, the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. And then minus one quarter, the same thing. So we've got a whole one over n squared, that sum, minus two one quarters of it, but that's gonna give us a half. So here we have a half the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. But that's a well-known value. In fact, I have a video where I calculate it in what I think is a pretty cool way. That value is pi squared over six, but we need to take half of it, giving us pi squared over 12. And so we've got our value for our goal integral, and that's a good place to stop.